Good morning. Just checking to make sure that I'm online and everything is working properly. Uh, this is going to be a behind the scenes reading. I'm going to read uh, several pieces, including one of mine from 2016. Um, these readings have a political character. And as some of you know, I am the author of a book called Political Psychology, New Ideas for Activists. And that was published in 2014. And additionally, I publish on the archetypeinaction.com website. And over the years, I've published over 325 essays relating Jungian psychology to politics. And th because politics has become very important to us in the United States in the last few years, I've decided to not uh, withdraw from that issue, but go ahead and address it since it's uh, my main interest. My main interest is the collective unconscious as it relates to societies, particularly the United States. And that relates obviously to Dr. Jung's oeuvre. So I'm going to begin today by a reading of my essay entitled On Dragons, Lightning, and Donald Trump as the Rope Dancer. Now, some of you may know that the rope dancer was a figure in Nietzsche's Thus Spoke Zarathustra. And if you know that work, then you will know what happened to the rope dancer. <laughs> and if you don't, you might want to read it. Um, it's very powerful work. And it's only about 200 pages long, but Dr. Young managed to do 89 lectures on the topic of Thus Spoke Zarathustra over a five-year period in the mid-1930s, between 1934 and 1939. And so it is a significant work, if only for that reason, <laughs> but it's definitely a, a mind-blowing piece of work and includes Friedrich Nietzsche's statement, God is dead. Um, but we're not going to talk about God being dead uh, in this session. This is a behind the scenes session, so it will be unedited and you get what you get. <laughs> um, and um, anyway, um, so here is my essay that was, this was published on June the 12th, 2016. And I would, um, I would observe that I've changed the tense in a couple of the sentences, but I begin this essay with a quote from Dr. M. Esther Harding's book, Psychic Energy, Its Source and Transformation. And uh, Dr. Harding was one of Dr. Jung's first string disciples. In other words, a disciple directly of Dr. Jung, who attended many of his lectures over the years. So now I'm going to read on dragons, lightning, and Donald Trump as the rope dancer. Beneath the facade of consciousness with its disciplined moral order and its good intentions lurk the crude instinctive forces of life, like monsters of the deep, devouring, begetting, warring endlessly. They are for the most part unseen, yet on their urge and energy, life itself depends. Without them, living beings would be as inert as stones. But were they left to function unchecked, life would lose its meaning, being reduced once more to mere birth and death, as in the teeming world of the primordial swamps. 
In creating civilization, man sought, however, unconsciously to curb these natural forces and to channel some part, at least, of their energy into forms that would serve a different purpose. That's a quote from Dr. M. Esther Harding's book, Psychic Energy, Its Source and Transformation, page 3. We've, we've seen all of this before in the course of human development. As the Nine Dragons scroll completed in 1244 proves, in China, frustrations with political correctness date back to well before the 13th century. In China, these frustrations would be modulated by dragons who hid in the clouds ready to strike. The instinctual forces of nature would emerge and show the people the error of their ways. A revolution would occur and a new dynasty would emerge. A revolution would occur and a new dynasty would emerge. Donald Trump is simply the human manifestation of those dragons in the 21st century. He intuitively understood that Americans were being too strictly managed by the powers that be, and he lashed out against those powers. It remains to be seen whether those same powers can manage to get Mr. Trump back into his cage or whether we innocent bystanders will have to suffer the pain of their indolence. Americans instinctively know that something is amiss. The tilted economy for the benefit of the 1% can no longer be hidden or ignored. The laws that gave that form are quite real and concrete. In human experience, when forms have become so concrete, they cause the people to go to sleep. Quote, it is like a dark cloud spread over the earth, but within that cloud is the lightning lying coiled, ready to strike. Then the lightning strikes and the cloud opens, the rain falls, the air becomes clear, the rivers begin to move, new plants come up from the part soil, and new life is created. The peculiar quality of the unconscious factor describes a psychological movement, the breaking up of an old order, and it starts to break up through the and it starts to break up through a sort of intuitive flash. Somebody suddenly has an intuition. Somebody suddenly has an intuition, and that is the first lightning, which then dissolves a whole complicated situation, which one thought would last forever. That's a quote from Dr. Carl Jung, Nietzsche's Zarathustra, Seminar 5, June 6th, 1934, page 78. When Friedrich Nietzsche wrote his precious <clears throat> when Friedrich Nietzsche wrote his prescient sermon, Thus Spake Zarathustra, or when Friedrich Nietzsche wrote his prescient sermon, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, his intuitive psyche was like a delicate scientific instrument which could see the future. He knew that the sclerotic morality of the he knew that the sclerotic morality of the Victorian era and the feudalism of medieval Europe could not withstand the natural forces that were emerging in the European people. His book shocked and worried many, but everyone just went on whistling. Twenty-five years later, World War I commenced to clear the air, and it should have, except that the Allies were too rigid in their approach in the Treaty of Versailles, and that caused even more monumental hardship among the German people, who had already suffered greatly in World War I. 
That rigidity led to another flock of dragons, which emerged in the form of Adolf Hitler and his murderous henchmen. Hitler was another delicate instrument, which understood the discontent of his fellow Germans and forged it into a vicious war machine, which took 50 million lives and 12 years to eliminate root and branch. The roots of the neurotic pain we all the roots of the neurotic pain we all felt in connection with election 2016 had their origin shortly after fascism was defeated. America's oligarchs who control the ebb and flow of most of the world's economy set up our rigged economic structure over the past 40 years. Without most, without most average Americans even noticing. But in 2008, when millions of us lost our life savings without understanding why, their psychopathology had been pushed to its limits. Since 2008, the Republican Party has made it its business to patch over the rifts of the system. But when the emperor wears no clothes, sooner or later someone notices and spreads the word. This is what both Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump have done in election 2016. They are the harbingers of the storms to come. Wall Street investment bankers known Wall Street investment bankers no doubt believed that they could rig the system so subtly that no one would notice. They could keep the vast majority of Americans in poverty. They could keep the vast ma they could keep the vast majority of Americans at poverty level minimum wage and even reduce Social Security and Medicare safety nets of the past in order to convert the middle class into a modern slave class. But the Republican Party missed the point of the shadow, the darkness of human nature. Donald Trump intuitively activated that darkness and distress over the past year and aimed it at the very billionaires who are his peers. Now they are in chaos because the Republican Party has been shown to be a limp facade to hide the psychopathic greed and avarice of Wall Street. They have been holding Americans back for their private gain far too long. Donald Trump, who surely will provide for Donald Trump. Donald Trump, who surely will provide for Donald Trump, is only their shill, and he will do what he is told as they build the Trump financial empire in hundreds of ways. But ultimately, he will be their victim, because as soon as his usefulness is expended, he will be spit out like gritty spinach. How do I know? Quote, you see, the ordinary man could not be compared to a rope dancer. He lives in good houses in safe cities that are watched over by the police, and there are excellent laws and boundaries to every country and settled conditions. But the rope dancer walks on a very high rope in the air. It is an acrobatic stunt, and if he falls down, he is killed. It is the tremendous it is a tremendous risk, the symbol of a dangerous transitus. That quote is from Dr. Carl Jung, Nietzsche Zarathustra, Seminar 5, June 6, 1934, page 81. This is the gist of the circus presented to us by the Republican Party. The clown car was good for distractions while the main event was set up, but the rope dancer gets all the attention in the end, and the clowns are just remembered as the butt of jokes for a generation. But in the complex, but in the complex world of the 21st century, we have many dragons or bolts of lightning to awaken us from our stupor. Bernie Sanders, of course, provided the Democrats' counterpoint to the rope dancer, but in the end, he never expected that he would be the main event.
We have many others, including untold numbers of young people who have been educated in outmoded systems around the world and are willing to die to clear the air for others. When will we ever learn? Okay, and um, the detail from the Nine Dragons hand scroll by Chen Rong is from 1244, and uh, it the picture of it there was um, from the was uh, displayed at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Okay, so that's my essay for what it's worth. And now I'm going to read a few more pieces from Dr. Young, and I'll first look for any comments or question. Um, Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I'm afraid this is going to be a political reading. Uh, this is a behind the scenes reading, and I'm um, doing a little bit of um, cut and paste of some, of some various items. Where is my book? Okay. So I think it's... Uh, very interesting. Um, there are there's a book called Two Essays on Analytical Psychology. Uh, this is let me get my dragon off the screen. Okay, let me change this a bit. Okay. So I'm going to read from two essays on analytical psychology from the works of Dr. C.G. Jung, Volume 7. And uh, first I want to read uh, Dr. Jung's preface. And before I begin, let me just see what Bernard has said. Keynesian economics was created in response to the Great Depression. The Federal Reserve sets monetary policy as a private entity separate from the U.S. government. It's a controlled market economy. Well, actually, that's their ideal, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Just stuff that I learned in school. Ha ha, the Federal Reserve is actually privately owned. Well, um, those are all true. <laughs> Granat, um, but the issue of the 2008 crash is didn't have to do with monetary policy. It had to do with the fact that Wall Street created a shadow currency that was off the books of the Federal Reserve. In other words, the Federal Reserve looks at some statistical facts and controls the money supply separately. But what happened was that the, um, the people on Wall Street basically created an alternate currency in the form of mortgage-backed securities, and actually mortgage-backed securities that actually were not mortgage-backed. And by cutting them loose, they were able to uh, double or triple or more than that, the value of those mortgages. And so they were selling securities that were cut off so much from the actual economy um, that no one really knew what was happening. And what they were doing was creating a dramatic inflation. And that's why the early 2000s were things were going very fast, things were running up, property values were doubling, and all that was because there was an inflation in basically this alternate money supply. The Federal Reserve didn't see it because they weren't looking at the statistics of what was going on in these mortgage-backed securities. But ultimately, when you have an inflation of that magnitude, ultimately there's a crash. And uh, what I was talking about with Dr. Jung in World War I was that after World War I, there was an incredible inflation in Germany. 
and then it crashed. People were taking money to buy bread in wheelbarrows and that collapsed the economy in Germany and it ultimately uh, uh, crashed the economy around the world. And so what happened in 2008 was this uh, inflationary alternate currency collapsed and so the reason that the Federal Reserve has only recently, only with uh, 10 years later, and only recently been able to start raising the interest rate is because the collapse crushed the economy. And so basically bankers haven't been able to give money away or not enough uh, to keep our economy going. and. Trump wants to, uh, right now, Trump is playing this thing where, oh, the economy is great, unemployment is great. Well, that's not true. I mean, that's not true for my generation, for the baby boom generation, because literally millions of us were pushed off the employment rolls and too late in our career to really get another job. And so you're benefiting from that because I don't, I'm not employed outside right now. Uh, but there are plenty of people in my generation who would be working, but they can't get a job or uh, they're slightly disabled. And so they can't stand at a counter in McDonald's. And so what Wall Street basically did was they ate the guts out of the American economy. I mean, years ago, there were uh, manufacturing jobs in the Midwest that made um, $30 an hour or more, up to $50 an hour, I think. And so at that time, the workers were doing very well. But when Wall Street decided that they were going to um, go for massive greed, they went and started to buy parts around the world. And so the economy of China, for example, really got ripping then because we were exporting our manufacturing jobs. And that wasn't done by the Democrats. That was done by the Wall Street investment bankers and uh, industrialists who were trying to make more money. And so what happened is all those people lost their jobs and they're looking for someone to blame. So they blamed whoever, <laughs> you know, never mind about the 2016 election, uh, but the, we're, we are where we are. And the reality is that the economy is not that good. Yeah, if you look at certain specific indicators that the powers that be use, it looks like 4.1% growth. But if you ask a baby boomer whether they're better off than they were in 2008, almost to a man, people will say no. And the, everyone lost value in their net worth, everyone. And, um, and so, um, so the Federal Reserve, basically, in answer to your comment, Grenade, the Federal Reserve hasn't been able to control the money supply for 10 years because there was this colossal deflation, which was off the books. And so they couldn't see it in their statistics, but it was happening off the books, which is the same place the inflation happened off the books. And so now slowly the economy is really starting to get going, but not without throwing out the life savings of many people in the baby boom generation and many others. And so we have to look at economics uh, critically and know what's behind the numbers people have been reading um, or touting, let's say. Um, and so Grenade says, uh, do you think student loan debt is potentially a bubble like 2008 
last question before Jung. Okay. Um, well, student loan debt is a student loan debt is an issue. I don't know as well how student loan debt has been um, securitized. And so I don't know if uh, securities that are based on student loan debt have been inflated the way mortgage-backed securities were. Maybe not. And so I, I just haven't looked at that. It so happens that I know quite a lot about mortgage-backed securities. Uh, and that's an issue that I'll be raising at some point in the future, but it's not a, an issue for today. Um, yeah, so, you know, Grenad, you wouldn't know what the rest of us have been through, but anyway, um, that, you know, that's like, that's like uh, the abortion issue. You know, all these issues are just made up issues that, let me just make one little adjustment here. I guess that's better. I was looking a little pale in the in the image here, so I, I'm adding to my tan <laughs> for the next few minutes. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. I'm getting out of sync again, and that is not good. And so um, I hope I was in sync at the beginning of this, but we shall see. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, discontinue this feed right now and see if I can reset uh, my broadcast software and then come back on in a few minutes. So you can watch for that if you want to continue. I'm going to stop the stream now for a few minutes because I'm out of sync.